Good morning and welcome to another episode, episode three of Sales and Entrepreneurship Series. And I'm really, really happy to have, I mean, Curtis is more than just a guest on this. Curtis has become a friend, a brother, somebody I talk to, share personal information with. But on, apart from that, I've really admired Curtis's in relation as to what he's putting out there for entrepreneurs and also being who he is, having to play the role of a sales person. So Curtis, welcome to the Sales and Entrepreneurship Series, brother. And uh, I'm not going to do any kind of fancy introduction for you. I would allow you to now let folks, tell folks exactly as to who you are, what is it that you do, what is it that you're all about and stuff like that. Take the floor, brother. Hi, Lyndon. Thanks for having me. Um, and, you know, how, uh, greetings to everybody who is listening and who will hear this recording. Um, Curtis Tusa, I, I flirt with failure. Um, <laughs> right. and, and, I, and I think that that has been my, you know, one of my biggest experiences in business. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, an author, a podcaster. Um, those are the public things. Um, I'm, I'm also a husband, a dad, um, a mentor, a coach when I need to. Um, and those are some of the more private things. So, you know, those, those are really the more important things or two of the really important facets of my life. You know, the, the, the public life, what people see, what people may know, and then the private life, you know, what people may not see and know. But it's, it's all one Curtis. Um, so, you know, as again, Lyndon, you know, really, really happy to be on this series to share, you know, from, from my point of view with regards to entrepreneurship and what I know and what I've experienced um, and even started practicing as it relates to sales. Right. You know, actually, I want to, I know that we, we, we talk in sales and entrepreneurship, but I, I want to mention again, Curtis, that your book, Work and What Nobody Says About It, has been a really big component to my 2019 is I think I was saying recently it is the only book that I've read for the year and mm -hmm. um, because I do a lot of things along the lines of the um, audio books and the, the podcasts and stuff like that but that book and especially where we first spoke about it um, where we spoke about organized effort being right. organized to being to being able to deliver on your work properly that has really helped me so I, again I just want to drop that in there if anybody hasn't gotten a chance to check that book out as yet i would definitely recommend that you all do it because the book has been so so influential to me so let me just ask this one time curtis mm -hmm. so we're talking let's start off a little bit in relation to sales right now you may right. not be a full-time salesperson, right that kind of thing but i mean being an author you have to of course sell yourself sell your book because of course you you you're not just writing so you have, the book is up there for sales through amazon as any digital platform um, but you also, the book also gives you the ability to leverage, to go into organizations, to spread more of that knowledge that you have to share. How has that been for you as a, as an author, as an entrepreneur in terms of really having to dabble and getting yourself into the, into the right doors, um, from on the sales standpoint, what are the, some of the things that you've, that has worked for you, that has not worked for you? Um, because the reason why I'm asking that, because you have entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs with no sort of sales background but they right. do have a skill set, they do have a talent that they really need to get out there. And I really felt that maybe asking you that question could also help share and add value to those other folks that, in terms of experiences and techniques. Um, so, so there's one place, one key area where sales and entrepreneurship, at least for me, where, where they, 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 they connect. And, and that is the area of research. All right. Um, you, you really have to be informed as an entrepreneur and, and even more so as a salesperson. Um, and, and again, every entrepreneur is selling, you know, at, at the very basic level, you're selling yourself and, and then you're selling your product or your service. But really doing your research is one of those key elements that, that has helped me. Um, and I found that, you know, looking back at, at some of the areas where, you know, some of those entrepreneurial activities that I failed at, um, it was because it, it was a lack of research. I did not have a complete picture of what was going on in the industry. I did not have a complete picture of, of what the, what, you know, of the client, you know, who were my clients, who were my real clients. Um, and, and that was one of the things that, that, that I know impacted negatively on, on business when I just started. Right. Um, 
so now as 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 an author as as an entrepreneur you know you really have to do that research um and, and one of the key areas of research that again sales people entrepreneurs anybody in business one of those key areas is um definitely understanding who are the stakeholders in in your in your market mm -hmm. um because and there's an example I'd use, and it, is, it comes home very, very clearly in one of my business activities. The end user is not necessarily the purchaser. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, the end user is not necessarily the purchaser. So, so you know, I'm interacting with, with, with one group of people almost every day, but they're not the ones that are making the spending decision. That's right. And so understanding that I have to deliver value for the people that I interact with on a daily basis, but that value also has to be communicated to the person yeah. who's actually spending. Yes. Um, you know, you, you have to know that you have to do that research and really understand that because it's something that I believe, you know, some entrepreneurs and salespeople in general fall down on. Yes. I, I, that, that is a, a really key point um that you brought up there because it is a it is a, it is a teaching where we try to understand where we try to talk about finding the influencer mm -hmm. or understanding everyone that's part of that buying decision like who are they buying it for procure like we would sometimes i would sometimes see salespeople only focus on the procurement department of an organization and right. just, no procurement is just facilitating the transaction they're just signing yeah. off and sending you the po mm -hmm. the equipment or the service is going to someone else Correct. So that person, what is it that they want? So I, I really like the fact that you said that um, a lot of your, your 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 learnings came through failure, and that failure because, was because of lack of research and understanding yeah. as to your business. You did speak about your 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 customer profile, maybe having your your the right people that you want to be able to get in front of. Yeah. Excuse me. And um, that again, that brother is 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 tantamount to really achieving excellent success. Once it is that you you've been able to identify that. So let me ask you another question. I, I know that you're doing the um, Small Business Saturday where you're actually now sharing a lot of this information, uh, valuable information to other entrepreneurs, small business owners. Uh, is that maybe one of the key things that you see coming up or what are some of the other things that you see coming up that you know mistakes entrepreneurs make that will, of course, ultimately affect their sales? Um. It is one of the key things. I, I think too that because I'm I'm usually aiming at so for example, last session I was dealing with leading and managing a small organization because usually it's one person that's wearing both hats. Um, you're the leader in terms of having to be the visionary and be, you know, kind of preparing your business for change or looking at trends and preparing for, you know, to meet those changing trends. Um, but then you're also the manager, you're the person responsible for maintaining whatever is the income generating activity that's happening now, keeping yes. things working. One person usually wearing both hats in, in a micro or small organization. Um, and one of the things that I saw is, is, is pretty easy to become disconnected um, in, in terms of your manager role. You, you, you're so busy trying to focus on the earning, and, and I'm not saying it's not important, but then you, you, you need to step back and lead. There's something in that, that Stephen Covey book I keep talking about, uh, you know, I've started reading that this year, uh, Primary Greatness. And, and he, he made the point that there are times when we overlead and undermanage, and there are other times when we overmanage and underlead. So for small businesses, is one of the things that I've identified, um, which is why I had this session, and even coming out of the session, um, people from different industries, um, I was seeing where they, they were leaning more to one side than the other. Um, and anything with balance is about balance over time. So it's not saying that in any given day you should be 50% leader, 50% manager. It's right. about knowing when you need to change gears. Um, because of course, again, as it relates to sales, if you are not, if you're not paying attention or forecasting where there may be a change in, in the demand in the market, or there may be a change in terms of how are people now appreciating this product or service? Or is there a new, is there a new customer that, that now wants more? Or, or, is, or is my existing customer base getting smaller? Mm -hmm. um, again, the research, being a leader in terms of looking at the trends, looking at the big picture, um, that's one of the areas that I think 
entrepreneurs as it relates to sales and the way that their businesses develop they, they need to be paying more attention to right right that's, that's that's a solid point and um it's it's interesting that you also say that because again the reason why I, I like the dynamic of it because yesterday i was speaking to um to beverly thompson from jamaica and mm-hmm. we were talking about how sales people should start considering themselves entrepreneurs because you have the you you are earning your way, but it's through your own entrepreneur, your through your efforts and your skill set, your income is driven by you. And this is um, for for the organizations that have the, the compensation structure set up in the right way. Excuse me, right where they are driven to earn more based upon their efforts, based upon achieving certain goals and targets and stuff like that. And a lot of the times, I I, I see salespeople not always really appreciating the fact that. Um, a lot of this is really on you. You are a business owner in its own small sense. And yeah. um, you do have some of them who immediately understand that. And you actually see them stepping out into that space of becoming their own business. The same things that they were doing for the company, they start doing it on the side, you know, or, or they, they, they move on and they do it all together, which I, think, which I think is really a good development of the entrepreneurial mindset. And, and one of the key things too is that... Um, you know, even if, if you, if as a salesperson, you view yourself as an entrepreneur in, you know, that, that whole issue of self-determining, um, what, what you do have going for you is that you, you don't have to seek an, an external accountability partner. Because right. usually within the organization, you have the metrics, there's somebody who's keeping you accountable or, you know, or even if you're the manager, you are that accountability partner to your sales team, but then you're also accountable to a board or to a, a VP or a director. Um, with the entrepreneur, on the other hand, you oftentimes have to keep yourself accountable yeah. or seek out an accountability partner. So, so there's a lot of similarities there. Um, within an organization, a salesperson, you kind of have it built in. Yes. And, um, but as an entrepreneur, you, you have to build it. Right. You, you have to build the accountability metric into what you do. Um, whether it's through software or, or an actual person that, that you meet with and, and they hold you accountable, but you have to find a way to keep yourself on target. Mm-hmm. Whereas the salesperson, um, usually the targets are set for you um, and there's somebody who's going to help you with the accountability. It comes with the job, but they're very similar in terms of being able to self-determine. You give more effort, you earn more money. That, that is basically the, the mantra. Let me, let me just switch it to another, another dynamic of it. Um, in terms of balancing, now I, I know that I'm familiar with the things that you do, right? Right. And all of your respective responsibilities. And the, a lot of the times you will hear entrepreneurs, including me, I might say, dude, I don't have the time to do all of that, boy. you know? Yeah. How is it that you actually balance it? Because, I mean, you, 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 uh, you share responsibilities in relation to a school. Um, you support clients. You do your stuff on your Saturdays. As you said, you are also a father, so you have your personal stuff. Normally, you will tend to find before people even make that step, they will say, boy, I don't have time for all of that, boy. You know? And yeah. but you, you are actually showing that you are, you, you are doing all of these things. How, how is it that you have moved yourself into really managing all of those and still delivering to your customers and, 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 and doing the thing on your Saturday um, as an entrepreneur uh, altogether? Well, I'll tell you, remember, um, I, we, we had a little discourse on LinkedIn. I said I had to revisit the book. And it was that same chapter that you like so much, um, Organized Effort. Yeah, yeah. Because it, that is really what it takes. Um, for me, as an entrepreneur, I tell people, apart from being able to self-determine, being in command of my 24 hours mm. is a really big thing for me. Yeah. Being in command of that 24-hour period. And so balance and with anything i mean there's usually some friction involved because you have competing interests i know for my family for my wife and my kids they they never get enough time but there are certain times when i i I literally have to say to my wife i'm like nico i have some deadlines um i have some stuff that i just need the mental space to prepare for um you know, and I need the time. And, and sometimes, reluctantly, I will get the time. Um, but it's really, a, and I think that as an entrepreneur is, is one of those things, your, your own personal time management. Mm-hmm. And um, 
not time management in, in terms of saying I can chop my day up into blocks where I do different things. Right. It's, about, it's about knowing that when I set aside four hours to do X, I, I already have a clear idea in my mind how I'm going to utilize those four hours. Right. Because you can't have your day set up in such a way that you have time allocated for different things, but then the time that you spend doing that is not really meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, there's something else that, that I often have to do is if there's you know planned abandonment. If if I'm doing something and I realize okay good no I'm I'm not in a mental space I'm not um, I'm not in the right physical environment sometimes to do some of the things that I need to do I say okay good I need to put this off until I can. Um, but it's really about being in command of your time. That's something that and, and quite frankly that's something I learned from my dad. Right. You know, he, he, he that's, that's one of the lessons he taught me, you know, in my 20s. He was like, you need to be in command of your time. Mm -hmm. You need to know what is important to you and how much time you need to allocate it and make that time, make the sacrifice. It's going to, it's going to result in you having to put off some stuff. But if this is of premier importance now, you make the time to do it now. Right. And so it, it has been a very tight balancing act. Mm -hmm. um, and balance, just like I was talking about the whole leader manager thing, balance is something that happens over time. Right. I'm never looking at my day and asking myself, really, um, did I spend enough time today doing X, Y, Z? Um, I, I'm more or less plan for the week or for a two week period and say, okay, good. Within this two week period, did I spend enough time or did I, did I utilize the time that I set aside for these activities? Did I utilize it properly? Um, so, and, and again, that goes back to something that I've often spoke about, the whole idea of your life being governed by the compass as opposed yeah, to the clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, so, is actually something that, that keeps popping back up in my mind a lot because sometimes I lose, I lose direction with so many different things, right? Uh, with Jared yeah. and I, sometimes we're working on SAP. Excuse me, I may have one or two personal initiatives I want to throw out there. And I sometimes have to... Uh, tell myself, wait a minute, when I look back, I'm not getting anything done. So sometimes I'm more focused on how quickly I'm getting it or I'm not, mm -hmm. or, or how it's, how it's not happening. And I'm not, and I'm missing the point that, yo, you're making small incremental steps in the right direction. Right. You know, so not really and truly how fast you're getting there, but you, are you on course? And uh, I really think that that, when you mentioned that to me, I think that was in one of your podcasts, correct? Yeah. 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 I share that in one of the podcasts because it's something that really, and again, just to, so just to give people more insight, I, I spend a lot of time stealing. Right. And, and, so, and so for me, it, it has always been about direction and, and being on course. That matters way more than the time that you're going to get there. So I, I use a simple, you know, I use a simple analogy. You set sail from one port and you head into another. And usually you can give an, and it's always an ETA, estimated time of arrival. So you have, you have a time frame in mind, but if your, if your ETA initially says four hours, do you stop sailing after four hours if you haven't reached the destination? You can't. You can't. You, yeah. What are you going to do? Just shut down and drift? No. You, so it's really more important to be on course to your destination. Yeah, there are all different kind of things. I mean, physically with sailing, you have the weather condition, wind, sea state. Mm -hmm. All of those things can impact on your time. Just like life. You know, mm -hmm. there are different things. Illness and not your personal illness. It may be the illness of a loved one. Mm -hmm. It may not be you losing your job or you not earning enough. It may be someone else in your family that, that, that offers that kind of support or supplemental in, income that they, they experience a hit. And, and it, shows you, or it throws you off in terms of time. But once you recalibrate or you refocus, regroup, right. and you plan, you stay on course because you're headed in a particular direction. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I shared at the beginning of the year, even with regards to strategic planning. Um, while I would encourage people, because I know, you know, end of year is usually a time when it, it's, it's best for some people to do that plan for the new year um, as they come to the end of one year. But I don't live my life by the calendar. Right. 
you know, I, for, for my family and I, we, we sat and we had our conversation about what we wanted the next 12 months to look like or the next 18 months to look like. We did that in April. Right. Hmm. I was out of the country um, um, into the new year and uh, there was so much that was happening. I did not want our planning as a family and even my planning as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur to be dictated by what was happening at the time. Right. I, I said, okay, good, no. My life is not going to end if I don't have a, a plan in place by the end of January. Um, because the whole thing is about me having a plan and working to that plan. Right. Not, not trying to say, okay, good, I have a plan. It's January and I have a plan. Where am I in March? Where am I in April? Mm. It's just about having the plan and, and, and staying true to the direction that you have set for yourself. Um, the, the, you know, that, that's one of the big things for me as, as an entrepreneur, um, having that plan, um, organizing the effort according to the work model, organizing the effort. So I'm, I'm sure that the time I spend, the resources I spend, um, the resources I utilize are really getting me closer to where I want to be. Right. That, that actually brings up something that we spoke about again few days ago where you mentioned something where, to me about legacy you know you we were having the conversation and you was you you were saying to me could uh, Lyndon everything that you do from there on forward is all about your legacy yes. every action that you make is is long-term legacy for you for your kids and everything else so I want you to sort of share that same thing that that legacy is really important from the standpoint of an entrepreneur because I think sometimes people may not be looking at it from the long, long term like that. They may just be saying, no. oh, I'm an entrepreneur, so this is what I'm doing now. But really and truly, what you, 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 your setting of a foundation is a lot different than if it is that you were working at before. Okay. And, and quite frank, if you remember, maybe the week before, I shared a little uh, a screenshot from a story um, out of the U.S. Yeah, with the company with this, that's 14 years old. Yeah. Yeah, an African-American woman who was now leading a construction company that was 114 years old. Yeah. And I was like, wow. And I asked the question, how many opportunities to quit could you find in 114 years? Yeah. But somebody felt that it was important enough to keep this thing going, not necessarily for them. Mm, for the generations to come. For generations ahead. And, and for, I mean, for a lot of us as entrepreneurs, I mean, I, I am fortunate. My, my dad is also entrepreneurial. I worked for him for a while. And there are a lot of things that I learned from him. Um, I've decided that I wanted to be entrepreneurial in a different sector. Um, but more importantly for me is about not necessarily building, not only, not, let me don't say necessarily, not only building a business that maybe my, my, my children could join me in, but also building um, building a pattern mm. that they can follow. Right. So, so whether or not they decide, okay, I'm going to take one of, one of daddy's businesses and, and make it my own, work with him in that, in that organization, um, or even take over that organization, they, they must have acquired a sense for how it's done. Right. Understand that there, there's a certain amount of determination that, that went into doing this because I want that 114 years down the road. There's some, I, I want to know that now, today, what I'm doing here and now is setting them up for a win. Right. Setting up my great-grandchildren, setting up the Tucson name 114 years from now for a really big win. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as entrepreneurs, particularly when you have a family or you're thinking about having a family, is one of the things that, that also has to motivate us. Yeah. How, 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 how are my decisions now going to impact future generations? Mm -hmm. um, future generations for yourself and future generations for your country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I shared that on Saturday in the leading and managing um, a small business. I shared some of the statistics as it relates to SMEs and their impact on the global economy. The fact that 60% of all businesses are small and medium. 40% of, um, of all employment in emerging economies come from small and medium-sized businesses. Because wow. 40%. And, and because nobody is really championing those figures, um, sometimes as a, as a small 
or medium sized business, you, you really feel as if, okay, good, I'm being overwhelmed and my contribution doesn't really matter. But, but those figures say to me that every small business, every entrepreneur who's starting up and, and, and positioning themselves for growth, their contribution matters more than they know sometimes, mm -hmm. more than they know. Great. Right. So, Curtis, boy, there's been so much that you've, you've, you've actually shared there with us. What I, what I want to do is I want to ask you to, if you had to leave one or two parting bits of knowledge from your own experiences, um, <clears throat> excuse me, what would that be as it relates to your, um, your expertise and also being an entrepreneur day to day um, for the audience? Um, there are two things, and I'd share one from, from my experiences or, or from my failures. Um, you don't ever stop. Right. You just don't ever stop. And for some people, it's easier um, and easier said than done, but you don't ever stop. And, and I could say that there are times that I, I stopped. Um, in, in the book, I share about, you know, wanting to be an, an architect as a, as a student. And uh, my math teacher basically laughing at me saying, oh, you could never be an architect because you're not good at math. Hmm. And I stopped. <laughs> I, I, I stopped even trying or thinking about being an architect. And, and the rest of my time at school was really meaningless. Mm. because that, that one goal or that one dream that I had was, you know, you literally pulled the rug out from under me. Right. Um, and I didn't, I didn't have what it took at the time to get up. Um, and so I gave up on the dream of becoming an architect. Wow. Um, there are businesses that I started as well that um, I think I gave up a bit too soon. One of them in particular, I, I remember having a magazine called Charisma Magazine. Charisma was a loose acronym for Caribbean Youth Magazine, and um, and I think I gave up too soon. It was during it, and this is about ten or eleven years ago. It was during the economic crisis, and advertising dollar wasn't there. Um, I didn't know as much as I knew now of sales and selling, um, and so I decided, you know what, I need to put this thing to rest. Right. Um, I have not really seen. Um, I haven't seen another publication that has mirrored that or, or has really captured the essence of it. I've had people reach out to me and say, you know, Curtis, why don't you restart Charisma? I think that there's still an audience, but that was one of the things that I gave up on too soon. Mm. Um, so I shared that one in terms of some, you know, some of my failures um, and I'll share from a point of success. Always be a student. Yep. Always be a student. Yep. Um, and we learn in so many different ways. Part of you being a successful student is firstly understanding how you learn best. Mm -hmm. Once you understand how you learn best, then you can put yourself in environments, give yourself access to the material that will best speak to your learning type. Um, in general, um, I think that in Trinidad, we probably introduced the whole concept of learning types a bit too late. So most times you experience it at tertiary level where there's some sort of assessment that says, okay, this is how you learn best. Um, but even as adults, I think that once we understand how we learn best, we can better position ourselves to be um, continual students. You know, when, when, when someone writes a book or when you listen to a podcast, you, you're literally benefiting from all of that. If, if this person has been in business for 15 years and they share in their podcast, you have just benefited from 15 years of experience, from 15 years of learning. Um, so, you know, you just have to be uh, an eternal student, um, you know, and, and just develop that whole culture of learning, regardless of your industry regardless of your entrepreneurial pursuits or where you're employed if you are not learning you're slowly dying yeah hmm. and so those would be my two things don't ever give up and never cease to be a student always be a student always be learning there are learning opportunities everywhere you just have to be and you know what 
the more you learn is the more you increase your capacity to learn right so once you turn that side once you turn your brain on to learning what happens is that you start seeing lessons in everything mm. it literally increases your capacity to learn so you know you is is you you're never going to max yourself out as a learner yeah you're never going to max yourself out so those would be my two parting words in that Yeah, the Curtis man, I and those are two powerful words because always being a student is something I always say to myself. There's always something to learn about an industry, whatever it is. There's always more, yeah. to do, you know. So, thank you so much, brother. Um, before we leave, I would like for you to please share with the audience where can put people find Curtis to say. Give us so give us all of your handles. Give us the book. Give us everything that's happening with you right now. Plug the program, um, the 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 Small Business Academy. Let us let them know. Let us know as, as when is the next one. Um, mm -hmm. But just just let us know exactly as to what's happening with you right now and where can people access and follow. Sure, um, Curtis Tuse Motivations on Instagram. You can see. You can follow me on LinkedIn. Let's connect. Let's have conversations on LinkedIn. Um, small Business Saturday. I take one Saturday each month to share with small and medium size. Um, organizations or people who lead those organizations to share on some aspect of business the next one is scheduled for september 21st right. and i'm going to be introducing people to an aspect of technology that um that is not really being shared for a lot of small businesses there's a lot of free technology and i'm not just talking social media there's right. a lot of free technology that people have access to linda you know all too well Yes. Um, that there, there's technology that, particularly in Trinidad and the Caribbean, that people are not yet utilizing, which they can utilize to make them better. So I'm going to be sharing some of those things, just introducing people to ways that they could find them, um, do the trials, see how it works, and, and really just improve your business processes as a small and medium-sized organization. Um, my podcast, you, I'm on the Anchor platform. Um, and it, it is also shared on Google Podcasts. You could also get it on the on the Apple Podcast platform. Um, Motivations for Excellence is the name of the podcast. Um, so you know those are a couple of the ways you could find me. So LinkedIn, um, Instagram, and via the podcast. If you wanted to, you know, reach out to me directly, to send motivations at gmail dot com is my email address. Um, you know, just give me a shout. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. Appreciate it, brother. Again, Curtis, thank you for your time. This was extremely, extremely, extremely valuable. And guys, sure. if you guys have any particular questions that you want to ask myself or Curtis, just shoot us a, shoot me an email. Uh, you'll get the description in the links below uh, when this is up, actually uploaded. Have a great, great day. Peace.